I am a PhD student at University of Verona, Italy, and working on computational propaganda detection, political propaganda detection on Twitter during Russia and Ukraine war. Uh, it is from the critical discourse analysis based theoretical uh, framework. And in today's presentation, I will be focusing more on the theoretical perspective as compared to the application of it. And yeah, so starting off with what I will be talking about, I will be talking about in brief, uh, talking about the broad definition of propaganda that I am pursuing for the research and then a brief introduction followed by the detailed framework and then the data collection that I have carried out and I will be discussing few examples for the clarification of how the propaganda framework will work with regard to the critical discourse analysis. So talking about the propaganda definition, it is a process in which a social actor attempts to legitimize the ideology of other social actors during the war through persuasion techniques in an environment that recontextualizes the targeted ideology. So the, from the color point of view, I will be focusing more on social actor ideology, persuasion techniques, and recontextualization. And yeah. So moving towards the introduction, there is no absolute truth and objective reality as by Foucault, Foucault's 1972's work and language is used as a tool to construct the social reality. Similarly, the CDA focuses on exploring the relationship between language and social context that uncovers social structures, power relations that are constructed through the use of language. And as per Van Dyke, these social structures and power relations may be constructed through the use of manipulative language. Therefore, it is important to understand those, uh, those uh, that language that is used for the reconstruction of uh, social structures and power relations. And since the social media has come up for the information dissemination largely over the years and specifically during the conflicts when the uh, these social media platforms are majorly used or major source of information and also used by the uh, politicians, uh, sometimes to influence public opinion or sometimes for other purposes. Then it is therefore it is important to investigate if these practices fall under propagandist discourse or legitimate uh, or legitimate discourse. So with regard to the state of art that has been carried out, Richards had talked about extreme, extremist discourse and propaganda within CTA. Then we have Joan Order who analyzed propaganda in war books from CTA perspective while emphasizing on intertextuality. Then Gareth and uh, uh, George and Donnell has presented, have presented propaganda from the communication process point of view. And Elul, who presented technological propaganda, where he talked about conditions like social, sociological, and objective conditions, followed by Laswell, who presented propaganda as a manipulation of significant symbols. So from here, this uh, from here, the studies of propaganda majorly come up uh, from the like Laswell 1927's work and Institute of Propaganda Analysis. So my theoretical framework focuses on four components mainly. One is ideology, second is a power relation, third is persuasion techniques, and fourth is recontextualization. So talking about ideologies, the ideologies generally are considered as the beliefs of the people. And with regard to that, I focuses on exploring the ideologies underpinning various discourses, including how they reflect and they enforce existing social inequalities and how these ideological conflicts, uh, sorry, ideologies are framed in the conflicts. And I will be carrying out, or the major focus is towards linguistic analysis where features like words and all those things are being focused. And yeah, these linguistic features are similar for the rest of three categories of my theoretical framework. So I will be just focusing, I have just put them here. I will not be discussing them in the further categories. The second uh, aspect of my theoretical form, uh, framework focuses on analyzing tweets to understand how 
who is presented as an oppressor and who is presented as a victim by the politicians from countries involved in the conflict. The third uh, component of my theoretical framework is related to the legitimization and delegitimization of the discourse. And among other categories, I am I am just focusing on the persuasion techniques that are employed in the tweets to legitimize the ideologies. And last but not least, the uh, component is recontextualization and that uh, recontextualization is mainly about how one words, how words or how meanings are being made from the previous meanings or previous words. So Syria can explore how events from the war are recontextualized on social media, uh, including how certain ideologies are highlighted or downplayed to fit broader narrative goals. And this research incorporates propaganda, critical discourse analysis, and then argumentation theory to adapt critical discourse analysis in cooperation with corpus linguistics as a theoretical framework to study the language used by politicians in their tweets for presenting war ideologies, power violation, persuasion, or manipulation, and recontextualization. So here is a like a depiction of my overall theoretical framework. And from the propaganda theory, I have focused on symbols, patterns, modes, presentation, and ideology. These are uh, the uh, simple patterns, modes, and presentations include uh, war, Twitter, issues of how the language is presented, and ideology uh, is more like a belief system that are being portrayed. And I have mentioned, I have carried out this ideology to the critical discourse analysis as well, which focuses on ideology, power relation, persuasion, and recontextualization. And for the persuasion techniques, I have relied on argumentation theory that have more clear, uh, I would say, fine-grained analysis of the uh, fine-grained persuasion techniques. And with regard to the corpus linguistics, my focus is towards frequency analysis, keyword analysis, and concordance analysis. While for the, uh, for the computational perspective, I will be relying on classification network analysis and semantic mapping. So my data collection was through the Twitter research, uh, academic research track, and I use Spark to library for it. And the tweets were collected from January 2022 to January 2023. And I relied on 700 relevant Russian political tweets. And that was the opportunistic, opportunistic corpora because I was able to get only 700 tweets, no more tweets were available with regard to Russian politicians. And then 700 out of 1100 tweets were randomly selected from the Ukrainian politician, politicians. And I have faced uh, three limitations with regard to the collection of my data, restrictions in Russia with regard to the use of social media apps and language choice by Russian politicians since I focused on the English language only. So it was, more difficult to get specific or relevant data than the change of Twitter policies. Uh, due to that, I was not able to carry out further data collection tasks. And for the data annotation, I prepared annotation guidelines in detail and three classes that has three classes and their subclasses, seven annotators took part in the annotation of data. And it is it was like, it is still going on. April 2023 to, to March 2024, it is anticipated that we will finish up in this week. And the classes and subclasses I will be discussing further. Ideology had 16 classes as mentioned in this column that relied on anti-Russian, pro-Russian, anti-Ukraine, pro-Ukrainian, pro-European, anti-European, pro-Western, anti-Western, and all those categories. Then power relation had two major uh, major categories, oppressor who is presented as an oppressor and victim. Then that has more focus on Russia, Ukraine and other as well as none, if there is no one. Then the persuasion, I selected only 18 persuasion techniques out of 79 persuasion techniques because of the, their relevancy and because of the state of the art in the persuasion technique research. And I will be just discussing one example over here. 
because it's uh, the work is still kind of way and we don't have the whole corpus analysis up till now. So uh, it's an example tweet for understanding how the theoretical framework works and how the data is being annotated for the computational classification that will be carried out in the later months. So German foreign minister Annalena Baerbock accused Russia of using hunger as a weapon. Surprisingly, it comes from the official whose country besieged Leningrad for 900 days, causing about 700,000 people to die from hunger. So in this tweet, we can see when we talk about the ideology, we can see it. the tweet has used two ideologies for anti-Russian and anti-European. Anti-Russian ideology is coming from accused Russia of using hunger as a weapon and anti-European is coming from German foreign minister and then followed by it comes from an official whose country deceased Leningrad for 900 days causing about 700,000 people to die from hunger and coming towards the power relations who is presented as an oppressor and who is presented as a victim. I, uh, it, clearly depicts that Germany is presented as a main oppressor. However, Russia has a minor role in the oppression and we have to imply certain things for that. Therefore, I have not focused on implicitity and coming towards the victim. Russia and Leningrad are being used as the victims. Then coming towards the persuasion techniques. So German foreign ministers like it, the it has used one seven persuasion techniques talking about the loaded language it it mainly focuses on the use of descriptive plus evaluative language so accused ratio of using hunger as a weapon is uh, considered as a lot loaded language thought terminating cliche that is mainly focusing on terminating the previous thought and moving towards the next thought with a lot of like mental thoughts, then it has used doubt, which is surprisingly in itself is a doubt as well as a thought terminating cliche. Then appeal to authority, the use of German foreign minister and Alina Baerbock is considered as an appeal to authority, then focuses on appeal to fear. 700,000 people to die from hunger and the word besieged is considered as a uh, appeal to fear, then smears, it's more like like uh, someone's uh, saying some, uh, something ill about someone else. And uh, the sentence, it comes from the official whose country besieged Leningrad for 900 days, causing about 700 people to die from hunger is smears. And what about ism is mainly about they did this and what about them? It, it is a fact and what about them so here they the like author of the tweet is focusing on about we are doing this and they are accusing us for this thing. and what about them they have done this thing so with that i will be moving towards conclusion i would be uh, it would be early to state the conclusive remarks about the present research as that annotation and analysis is still in progress and based on the data collected and analyzed so far it is reflected that the politician in their tweets have utilized propaganda with diverse use of ideologies and persuasion techniques while presenting opponent or their supporters as oppressors and portraying themselves as victims so with that thank you very much yeah, these are the references that I have used for the this paper. Thank you very much. Uh, uh,